What's up you guys? I'm Dan, this is Frugal Not Cheap, and today we'll go over some FSD beta tips and tricks. Alright, so the first tip here today is to actually turn FSD beta on if you just got it. Um, I mentioned this because when I first got it, I did not realize that I needed to do that. I started driving and uh, um, FSD beta did not engage, and so I was like, what was going on? I had to park and turn it on. So it is under the autopilot menu. There is FSD, uh, FSD beta. You can choose if you want to go chill, average, or assertive in terms of uh, the profile. And uh, so you can see I'm doing average, which has a medium follow distance. Assertive would have a smaller follow distance and then try to get around people more. It'll be less impatient, basically, um, and won't exit the passing lane. I'm going to go back to average because I do like that. All right, guys. So now that we know how to get FSD enabled, we'll go for a quick drive. And what I think we'll try to do is to recreate uh, my initial drive on the first day and try to go to the Kroger parking lot. All right, my next tip here is that um, it does actually understand gates. <laughs> so it uh, uh, is going to wait for these gates to close. And then now we're going to be able to proceed forwards. So my next tip is that it can be... Um, beta is relatively dumb when you first engage the system. And so it's usually a good idea to kind of... Uh, make sure that you don't engage it in sort of the most complicated scenarios because it could be a little bit harder for it to figure out what it's got to do but so far so good it was able to make that turn quite well i think that was quite safe but we do need to be getting over uh, a couple of lanes so here we go it's going to change lanes for us But we have now a yellow light. Oh, good job of winning the cone there. Yeah, FSD beta is really great. So uh, you can't see it on, on the screen, unfortunately, the wheel's in the way here. Um, but on the other screen where it has the navigation directions, the next tip is that it will, just like on uh, the highway navigate on autopilot, it will let you know when it's planning to do a lane change, oftentimes, and you can override it by clicking the button and, you know, saying, you know, tap to cancel, basically, on those lane changes. So it's showing that right now in blue. Maybe you can see a little bit, and I could tap that if I wanted to in order to cancel the lane change. But of course, this is a lane change that we do want to go ahead and do. Very nice. <laughs> that guy's all over the place. That's okay. All right, Betty doing a great job so far. Sneaking forward. I've got my foot on the brake just in case, but I think you can tell that, yep, there's no one around. So here we go. So another quick tip, though, if we've been going a little bit too slow there, then there's no problem with uh, hitting the gas and thereby uh, getting us to move a little faster. All right. So... Next tip, you can also change the speed limit. So it doesn't understand school zones, but I'm gonna use the, uh, the, the control stock on, on Model 3 or Y, it'd be different. Um, but I'm using the stock to reduce the speed limit down to 25, which is the appropriate speed for this school zone. Now, beta is not all that quick about adjusting to that, so be warned. If you reduce the maximum speed by say 10 or 15 miles an hour, it's going to take a while before beta actually does that, unfortunately. But it will eventually do what you told it. I wish it would do it a little bit quicker because usually there's a reason why you're, you're telling it to do that. Here 
we go. Now we're resuming the 40 mile an hour speed limit, so we can crank the speed back up to 45. If you're on beta, by the way, it will allow you to increase the speed limit beyond that, but that's not something we want to do. All right, another thing that's nice about beta, just like in Navigate on Autopilot, is if you don't like the lane it's selected, you can hit the um, directionals, your indicators, and it will change lanes automatically for you, just like on Navigate on Autopilot. Another thing you might like to know is how does Tesla get any feedback? Well, basically anything that you do that overrides the car's behavior is going to be feedback. So a lot of us don't have that little snapshot button uh, at the moment. I think they might be including it in version 11, but if I were to hit the brakes and disengage the system, certainly that would be uh, something that, that would be recorded. Uh, I'm sure they can also uh, find in the data when I press the accelerator. And then also if you um, pull the steering wheel, then of course that will disengage the auto steer and uh, that will also be a data point for them as well. You might be wondering why it's not nagging me to put my hands on the wheel at all and that's because just out of view of the camera uh, I do have my hands on the wheel applying a light amount of torque that way it knows that I'm paying attention. Uh, also allows me to very easily um, close the tightness of my grip and stop the wheel from moving if it starts to do something that I don't want it to do because beta, beta may still do exactly the wrong thing at exactly the worst time. So one should be ready but that's not to say that the system hasn't been very safe and very effective uh, during my time using it so far. If you're wondering about this view here, I did select the option to have expanded visual FSD visualizations, so that's why it's taking up the whole screen. I think it looks pretty cool. That is an option you can toggle off though if you don't like it. All right, here we go pretty soon. Not this one, but a little bit further up here, we're going to try to take the left turn that we had a little bit of trouble with last time. There's quite a bit of traffic today again too, just like last time. Little note there, I do think it would have been nice if it had turned the turn signal on a little bit earlier to let people know uh, why I was going so slowly and kind of to, to plan accordingly. But anyway, here we go. So right now things are looking good. I'm going to just let it do its thing, although um, I probably could have given it the gas in order to uh, move a little bit quicker. But there you have it. We are now in the parking lot <laughs> and the tentacles kind of taking it around uh, in a weird way. Uh, this is just the way that um, the navigation system told it to go. So I did everything properly. So I disengaged the system using the stalk and when you do that um, it doesn't send a signal to Tesla that the car did anything wrong. So I think that's a good way to do it. Just as a, a habit, um, try not to disengage using the brakes when it's doing everything right, uh, only to do the brakes and whatnot um, when it's necessary to apply them uh, to avoid beta doing something dumb. All right, guys, I think that's really all I have to share with you right now. Uh, the car is going to navigate home from here. And uh, in order to listen to some good, uh, you know, copyrighted music that would cause me a copyright strike and enjoy the ride back, I will see you when we get back there. Alright guys, we made it back just fine, and uh, another disengagement free drive on the way back home, which is pretty pretty wild. It's certainly performing a lot better than it did the, the first time around. So with that, um, I think I'd just like to say that the, the main tip and trick for FSD Beta is to be very safe. Make sure you've got your hands on the wheel, you're always keeping an eye out for uh, whether or not it's going to do something silly, and uh, have your feet near the brake and accelerator and be ready to take over.
So with that, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button, consider subscribing. I've got some links below in the description if they're useful to you that'll also support the channel. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.